first word we're going to go over is delta. Delta stands for a change in something. Generally a measurement and things like that. You see delta in a lot of things throughout physics. Okay. The next word is sigma. It looks like this. When it's drawn properly, I should say. It looks more like that. That's a better one. Sideways M, kind of. That means a sum. Sum of something. So like, what is the... The next word that we're going to go over is theta. Theta you see in, a, in an angle. So like in geometry when you're trying to find angles you have x. And then you have like 45 and 90. Well, instead of x we have theta in physics. And it's for an angle of interest. The word, or symbol we're going to go over is, fit, is pi. You probably have seen pi because you're in physics, you've done math before. It stands for 3.14 and we have it for the same reasons that you have in math class for finding circumference and things like that. The symbol is absolute value. Absolute value is found in a, an equation that says like 5 plus the absolute value of 4 equals 23. Now there will be another video to show you how to solve an equation like this, but when you see absolute value, that's what that stands for. The next symbol that we're going to go over is parallel. In some equations throughout physics, you'll see something like this in physics. That symbol stands for parallel. So, F is parallel to D. The next symbol that we're going to go over is perpendicular. So using the same variables as last time, you'll see something like that which means F is parallel to D. That's how it's written. The final symbol that we're going to go over is wavelength. This is going to be one of the last things you go over in physics 1. This symbol stands for wavelength. So we're going to go over waves, which will be in class, but you'll see this inside of equations, and that stands for wavelength.